What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Michael here with River Creek Outdoors. We're going to be installing the Helix 7 Hummingbird Fish Finder Mega Down Imaging and Chirp on the Hobie Pro Angler 12. So I decided to go with the 7. I thought that was a good size for my kayak. I almost went with an 8 or 9, but I feel like a 7 is just perfect. I have the uh, Garmin Striker 4 on my fill free, which does does me really well on that kayak, but I feel like with a bigger kayak, I need a bigger fish finder. So decided to upgrade. I have a few accessories that I bought with it. Okay, for this, uh, this is a HRL 1.5 ball. This is a little cover. I don't know if y'all can see that, but hummingbird cover. Also bought an adapter kit. This is something that I want to say you need. I'm not sure if you need it for the newer versions, but I purchased it just in case. Just never know. And then a universal electronic mount. So this is where my fish finder is going to be hooked up to. Anyways, uh, another thing that you will need for the install is, of course, the battery. I ended up purchasing a Dakota lithium 12 volts battery. And the reason I want the lithium is just because it's way lighter in weight. One of the things with kayaks is you don't want anything weighing you down and making you slower. And it's plus it's a pain to load the heavier you get it. So uh, lithium is the way to go. It lasts longer. It's more expensive, but I mean, you're going to pay with pay for what you get. So in the long run, I would recommend going with the lithium battery. If not Dakota, go with any other brand that's out there. So you can see the garage is a little dirty, but there is the Hobie kayak. I'm gonna try to make this quick and easy. See how long this takes. I'm hoping I can get it done in here and it's gonna be a two day project. It's pretty late already and I'm hoping to have it ready by, by this weekend, Saturday. I'm gonna go out fishing early in the morning. So let's get to it. So the first thing I did was remove this little plate from the transducer kit. And Hobie actually comes with a another transducer mount. And this is so the transducer, if it you know gets hit, it'll somewhat protect it. So installed that. Now onto the next step. So the next step, <clears throat> what I did was I installed that screw through the top and then the smaller one through the bottom. I tried mounting it the other way up here with that little kit from Hobie, but the wire was causing me some issues. So I had to mount it this way. I think the transducer will read through the plastic. Um, only one way to really find out is to get it out in the water and test it. but. I think this will work. I'm gonna use it for now and I will keep y'all updated. If y'all subscribe, I will post a video about the on the water experience to see if this will work. Forgot to mention there are six little tiny screws right in there. By removing that, what it does is it allows this fish finder to drop, move freely in case it hits something. I think this is more intended if the fish finder were to be mounted on the back right here, but since I mounted it this way, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I went ahead and removed it anyways, just in case I decide to switch it around in the future. All right, so the next step is going to be to feed this wire through that little hole. And what I had to do, I'll show you all around the kayak. You remove this, run that through there. I'm going to remove this as well and run the wire through all the way up into the middle hatch where I'll take out the tub that I have, and then I'll run it back through this other little side hole. I'm gonna be mounting it to the right side, so right there, and feed it to the fish finder. So now once I got that bolted back in, I am going to be pulling that cord through this middle hatch. And then I'll be putting this little piece back on. 
All right, and when you're installing this or uninstalling this, and there's these three little bumpers, you wanna remove one of those bumpers. The Hobie kit, when you first purchase your Hobie, should come with something like this. And what that does, it helps keep the cord tight and keeps water out from going through the hole of the kayak, so. All right, so next step, I'm gonna be running this cord back up through this side and up into that little hole, which will lead to my fish finder right there, so. All right, so as you can see, I ran the wire through the little hole right there. I'm not gonna leave too much slack. I just wanna make sure I have enough room to mount the fish finder where I want it, and then I'll adjust it accordingly. All right, so it's day two. I ran out of time yesterday, so I decided to finish it up today. Um, this little ram mount, the hummingbird adapter does not fit correctly on here, so I had to just bolt in the top two, and I just decided to stick with that. It's pretty snug. It's not moving anywhere, so I feel comfortable leaving it like this without having the four bolts in there. So if I change my mind, I may end up having to drill into this, but I'm trying to avoid that. Um, but this should work for now. All right, so that's how that unit sits. Sits pretty well. I think it's gonna look nice on the yak. It's a good size, not too, too big, not too small. Pretty good looking. All right, so the original plan was to run the power cord all the way through the hole, through the kayak, and back towards the back hatch and have the battery sitting there. Ran into one problem, and that is the power cord doesn't extend very long on this hummingbird unit. So I had two options, either extend that wire and run it through, completely through to that back hatch which is just going to be more work. So what I decided to do was put the battery down in here. Let me turn on my brightness. Let's see. Decided to put my battery down in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Velcro. And I got this from an idea from my buddy Jay. He did this to his kayak. Put some Velcro down right here and just mount the battery on that Velcro. Still need to attach that, but that's how that's going to sit back in that little corner. All right, got the wiring done. Um, it's Velcro down so I can just pull it out. Like that it sits there pretty snug, so it's not going anywhere. And if I need to charge it, I can just pull it out or just charge it from here. But now it's time to manage these cords, plug in the fish finder and see what happens. This looks like a good spot. It looks like it's uh you know, close enough to the seat, but far enough away where I can still cast and not get in my way. Only one thing left to do, and that's to uh, turn it on. All right, so let's give it a uh, quick test. There we go. Have power to the boat. Going to be testing this out Saturday, so make sure to subscribe, and y'all stay tuned.